right guys this is going to be a little video on getting this 1954 ford pickup back up and running it's been sitting for about 12 years i'm told and uh, let's do a quick walk around of it so you can check her out we'll get it winched up and home it's a little bit better approach angle This is a good looking truck. So this is a second generation Ford F100. And so it's a 53 to 56. Definitely uh, showing it signs of wear. Clear coats coming up from its last restoration along with lots of bubbling and showing that old rusted metal in there. Got some broken glass here and there as we walk around. And uh, check out the latch on these old trucks. It's got this thing locks out until you hit it and then that'll, that'll freewheel when you push the button. Very neat, otherwise it won't spin clockwise. Um, so I have no key for this truck either. I, they couldn't find the keys at all. And then, so that's for the gas cap too, but that seems to be loose. I couldn't get it off yet though. I, I searched the truck high and low. Uh, let's see the interior. This bed looks like it had water sitting in it for some period of time because the wood's all warped over there too. It does have a key slot on this side, but not on the driver's side. Not sure what's up with that. Ooh, that door opens much nicer. Here's the heater. Now under the hood, this has got, I'm told it's a Pontiac 400. And based on the pictures I was just looking at, that seems to be what it is. So she's pretty clean. I'll probably uh, pop the plugs out, spray some lube in there. I did uh, crank the engine by hand and it, it budged a little bit so it's not locked up or anything. You got long tube headers, they look like inch and three quarter. Ellibrock carburetor. Uh, it says Weber on the side of it too. Holly intake manifold, this is a street dominator. And the underbody of this thing is very clean for a 54. I mean, somebody. Did a really nice job of painting this whole frame and cleaning this all up. Got some flow masters on it. Wow, look at the bottoms of those boards on the bed. I can probably flip those over and it look like new. Does have disc brakes in the front and disc brakes in the rear. So what do you guys think? A little shot of starting fluid and then she's gonna fire right up or we gotta pull the carb? Yeah, about an inch, inch down. So one of the other problems is the shifters just kind of flopped in the wind, hoping that's just a cable off on the bottom. And uh, here's our ignition switch. Probably just order a new one of those, but I'm sure it's pretty easy to, to hot wire it. Um, Cause you can get right to all the wires and it looks like what, four wires go to that thing. Before cranking it over, I'm gonna give it uh, some fogging oil in here too, just in case the cylinders are dry. And I also jacked up the rear because I don't know if it's in gear or not. And that'd be a shame if it uh, redlined and drove into my garage and totaled it. It actually was in drive too. 
and you can see it just came off this rod came off up top uh, so I just gotta get that back on there I did notice the rear leaf spring sorry the front leaf spring rear eye seems to be missing the bolt um, on this side it's got the oh, it looks like the whole bolt's broken yeah how about that so we'll have to get one of those all right so this actually got just three posts on it you got hot on the yellow looks like that the starter was um, red and blue the ground here so this should head to the starter then so I wasn't getting a click or anything at the starter and then I'm just wiggling around checking all the wires and this this ground cable is just completely loose I'm gonna tighten that down also got some other dangling wires around here. Let's see if that did nothing. There we go. Got the tumbler out of there. Now we can use the ignition switch. Let's see what that does. Nothing. Yeah, silly me. I figured it out. It's a very simple switch. Yeah, I just jumped it. And then this red, blue actually comes over to this side and this is the st starter so and uh, here we go yeah turns over nice and smooth it's got a mechanical fuel pump and the fuel filter you can see it's bone dry and i decided to hook it up to an auxiliary fuel source for now and i took the main fuel uh that goes to the carburetor and i ran that over to a bucket so we could see what the fuel looks like that comes out of the tank once uh, once it starts up, see when I fill this bowl, if it starts flooding over or anything, I just give the bowl a good tap. I assume we're gonna have to take this carb off, but hey, you never know. Just shot a trusty starting fluid. Let's see if we got any spark. I got this hooked up to the starter. Nope, no spark. I guess the next place to go is going to be this distributor. This is uh, Delco Remy, and I'm looking at it. I see three wires that go down to the bottom, but I don't see any wires coming into this at all. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, all right, well, no, I'm not getting uh, B plus on this one. And then I, I see these wires kicking around. So this one that was just kind of taped up, this is a uh, red green. This is hot with ignition on, so I'm assuming this should be going to the distributor. Let's I get that power hooked up it makes me pretty worried because it was like straight cut <laughs> um so hopefully it doesn't mean somebody did that and this thing's got like a rod knock or something oh here we go Island. You gotta love that. Not pumping fuel yet on the fuel pump, unless the tank's just empty, which hopefully that's it doesn't uh, burn out the fuel pump if it is empty. Burns like a kid. It's trying to a few keys, and this one fits almost close, but this. Ooh, that don't smell good. Well, she's bone dry, and uh, I can hear some rust in there too, but let's throw some in there. Yeah, there she goes, throwing some fuel. Cool. Alrighty. Got to top off trans fluid. It wasn't on the dipstick at all, so I just put one cord in. Let's see where we're at. Uh, still dry. I had an extra half a quart and I got her just on the bottom of the dipstick. Let's see what happens when we go in gear now. Ooh, so when I go in the gear, it's actually pushing the brake pedal back at me. Oh, all right, that was nice engagement. Oh, I got a block behind the wheel, don't I? Oof. So weird that you can't shift it without lifting the brake pedal up. What the heck is up with that? Oh, what the? 
I see. Oh, I see why. This is the brake pedal, and it runs right in line with the shift linkage. So when you shift it down, you you literally can't press the brake in once it's in gear, without it'll push the the linkage off. So that's why the linkage probably bent off. Somebody mashed the brakes and it shoved it off. Oh, well that that would explain some things. Yeah, that's got no brake fluid. I gotta pump those up. <laughs> Okay, that could have went bad. It's not exactly easy to get to this, Master. I guess I'll just pop the panel off inside. There's the master. Oh yeah, she's low on fluid. A lot of water in that brake fluid. I have to do a real thorough flush. Same deal from the front, just real nasty, nasty brake fluid. No signs of any brake leak so far, but that rear master was definitely dry, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. Oh well, that's as tight as she's going without breaking that bolt. Oh, oh yeah, wasn't much holding that leaf spring in, huh? I'll have to order a new greasable pin, but for now, Sure, I got something that'll work. I always just throw a bolt in it too. Five eighths bolt with lock nut, it is. Oh, I should have cleaned the windshield, huh? <laughs> Let's go for a little spin around the neighborhood. Hey, she took five quarts to get up to level on the ATF, so. We got some kind of a leak, I'm sure. Oh yeah, she's dripping. These old trucks got incredible airflow features. One of them being the, the triangle vent windows, which I won't open because they're all cracked. But the other one being this guy right here. I mean, come on, how awesome is that? And it works good too. Ram air coming right down under the dash. going down the road. <laughs> I just get used to it though. She's got some balls. I hate that it's automatic though. You gotta swap a four speed in this thing. I'm trying to eat slices of pizza and cruise. You cannot drive with your knees. Well, at least if you're six foot two, you can't drive with your knees in this thing. It just doesn't work. The speedo's not working, but you can see here how high the RPMs, and we're only doing about 48 on GPS speed. So I'd say, I mean, let's see, the fastest you really want to go, especially this leaf spring suspension, is pretty, pretty bouncy. But uh, let's see, I'd say about 55 it can do. Yeah, there's 53 right there. Not too bad. Well guys, had an awesome night cruising around, but she let me down. I was down here at my buddy's lake spot and after letting it sit, it just would not start no matter what. Getting like a weak red orange spark. So I think it has a bad coil, which is built into the distributor. But yeah, I had to drive my truck back here and I brought my uh, EU2000 and a charger. Cause I think if I get some high voltage starting power with the charger, then we can get her going again. Who knows, maybe she'll just fire right up after letting it sit for another 20 minutes. Let's give her a shot of ether. Nothing. 
Come on. Yep, gotta put the charger on. Finally got her. I think it was just that higher battery voltage. Good crank, fired right up. So I took the distributor cap off and you know, the ignition coil looks pretty rusty and old. So I went ahead and got a new one of those at uh, AutoZone, a Duralast. And I'm gonna put that in. Hopefully we have some stronger spark. Mm. Yeah. A little flooded out, I think. The true test will be hot starts. I'm gonna go ahead and set the timing now too. And here's the true test. It's been sitting for 20 minutes and with that bad coil, it was very hard starting hot. So let's find out here. Oh, she's still a little pain in the There it goes. When I came out this morning to start the truck, the battery was stone cold dead. So after charging it up, uh, we're gonna check for a parasitic draw. Must have something going on. So I got my, put this over on DC amps swap over to the amps and then i'm going to hook this in series with the negative terminal so you just flip one on there and then yeah i got these what we're wiring it up in series basically connecting the ammeter in between the two so negative 3.68 amps wow that's quite a bit our interior lights on though right now let's see what we got right now negative 3.28 so we got a big big current draw Let's check our fuse box, see what kind of powers we got. We got nothing on this 10 amp. Nothing on the 7.5. Okay, we got hot. It's at 20 amp. And it's 30 amp. Let's start by pulling the 20 amp out, see if our draw goes away. It did not. Put that guy back in. Let's pull a 30 amp. Completely gone. Right, so we gotta find out why it's doing that. So I'm gonna start by checking what some of these wires do at this ignition. The way I've been driving is just jump starting it, jumping between the poles. But all right, after lots of fiddling around, it turns out somebody had these two yellow wires together, and that was constantly, even with the ignition off or not jumped, it was constantly sending power over to the alternator. Uh, so exciting the coils the whole time and that's what the, the current draw was so that's all fixed up and now I'm gonna throw a new battery in here so I can put my jump optima back in my truck. Let's check what our charging voltage is at. We got 13.6. Bring. Yeah, I'm good with that. Doing a quick check for any vacuum leaks. Listening for an RPM change. Here's a quick undercarriage walkthrough. It's nice that somebody did the disc brake conversion all around and the Ford 9 inch rear. This does have a posi in the rear too. Little brake fluid leak in the left rear caliper. The fuel tank is rusted through and leaking on the bottom. So that sucks, but uh, it does have a drain on it so I can drain that out real easily. And then this willow wood is uh, leaking up here too, some brake fluid. You can see that it's been eating the paint off the frame here's that bolt I put in before uh, so pretty good oil leak and it seemed like a trans leak up here too but I think it it might even just be this guy's flare connections on here because you, you can see that goes in on an angle so I'm gonna try tightening that up that is the underbody fuel leak brake leaks those got to be taken care of the torque screw on this brake valve was actually loose so I snug that down hoping that takes care of the brake leak and then on these uh, lines, trans lines, I was able to straighten, straighten this one out and snug down those. So I just sprayed it down with some brake clean. Let's start it up and see if that fixes it. Check this rear diff fluid too. Yeah, we're good. It smells good too. 
put a brake depressor in here to hold constant pressure and I'll recheck for leaks. Sounds like a pretty good manifold leak up there too. And so far so good on the trans lines. Got the new key tumbler, AC Delco. It's uh, made in China. And I ended up getting a new ignition switch too because the other one's got high resistance. I'll show you that in a second. And this is also made in China. So the way I determined this had the high resistance in it is if I put it on the on position, uh, the car would sometimes not start. And then if I took a jumper wire and I went um, between these two terminals, it would fire right up. Now, since this one does have the fourth center post for starting, I could run the switch, uh, the wire over from the starter switch button, but I'm gonna leave it just like that. No voltage drop at all. So that's what, we, that's what we're looking for. This, this switch definitely had uh, some corrosion or something going on inside. And she should fire right up too. Oh yeah. Cool. You see, we got some oil dripping on our hands too. This darn, uh, I'm gonna try tightening down that oil line coming for the oil pressure gauge. fuel tank and take the carburetor off see what that looks like inside Was able to mostly save the gasket but got a couple little tears in it at first glance the bowls aren't too bad got some sludge down here looks like some water at some point but look at this the this bowl is completely dry and I just drained this carburetor yesterday so that should not be uh, so this float was actually a little sticky on this side and uh, yeah that floats completely dry so it looks like we had one dry bowl and I can't believe it ran as good as it did. So this rubber was just stuck into the seat. No corrosion or anything in there. So now I'll uh, lube that up a little bit, drop her back in, and went through the rest of the carb a little bit. I took these emulsifiers out and uh, everything looks tidy and clean. So I'm just gonna blow all these ports out and we will wrap it up. I even took out the main jets. And of course those are whistling clean too. One thing to check with these brass floats, inspect them for any cracks or breaks in the solder and then shake and make sure there's no fuel inside because if there is fuel in there then they won't float up and shut the fuel off properly. I'm ready to throw this car back on. I do want to order a spacer for this too. You get like a fiber spacer maybe a half inch or more just to try to keep some of the heat off the carb coming up from the intake but I'll have to order one of those. That was pretty easy. I had to get this with a crow foot up top. 
because it started around with it with a wrench. And you see this fuel line is actually starting to rub through on the frame. So they, they had a rubber bushing that slid down. So I have to put that back in place and zip tie it. And uh, luckily I didn't have to take this front, the entire bracket off because those bolts are behind the uh, master cylinder. This is the current fuel pickup sitting up vertical this is what's on here looks like maybe 3 8 mpt and they give you this adapter but that's not really going to do me any good this looked like it was welded on but it's actually threaded in eighth inch mpt <laughs> see that's what i love about having parts on hand oh yeah Probably should have pre-filled the bowls, but she should pump up pretty quick. So it runs much better with the other fuel bowl open, but not like night and day. Still has a slight hesitation. It definitely pulls much better at the top end though. It's getting ready to dump outside right now too. It rained a little bit last night and I go to open the door today, it had what seemed like a gallon of water in it. So I had to drill some weep holes in the bottom of the door since uh, they were just painted over. I've also got to check this left front tire for a slow leak. The rest seem to be holding there. And while I don't love these wheels, uh, you know, these tires still have plenty of life in them, so rock those and then maybe get something more appropriate later down the road. This in the bearing cap too, but I guess with these hubcaps, it's not such a big deal. It's just got a leaking plug on it. That's one of the reasons we don't use those at my work, because they're not really a permanent fix. They tend to dry out over time. Patch plug is much better. <laughs> the wheel off I tried snugging this Pittman arm down and ended up stripping the nut so I guess see if I got a, another bolt for it. Ended up having this grade 10 metric bolt. It's a touch thicker but I think it'll work. Yes! Having spare hardware really comes in clutch. And that locked it down real good this time. That other bolt was just beat. This radiator's got a small pinhole up top. It's been uh, leaking out over the last day. So, not horrible though. Just gotta bring that either solder that or bring it to a rad shop. Take out the papers and the trash. good that little leak turned into a big one and 
we blew a trans line of some sort. <coughs> oh boy. Holy smokes, trans fluid everywhere. I had to get her off the main road because otherwise someone's gonna call the EPA on me and get some uh, trash yeah, to soak up some of this oil. What the heck? Pickled mushrooms and stuff? Jeez, somebody's been dumping back here. Ah, it says right there, notice, no dumping allowed on that sign. Come on, people. Totally my fault, guys. I went over those train tracks way too fast, and I found a leak. With the smoke cleared, I can now see the rad fan chopped right through the cooler line. So this fan comes like so close to that line. I wish I would have noticed that before. Then that uh, would have been a big deal. So, you know, the body and engine shifted a little bit, slid it right open, sprayed the whole underbody or under hood with trans fluid. It's coming out of the hood, out of the rust here. Hey, that's one way to rust proof, right? Uh, so I'm sure the body guy who sees this next is going to be annoyed because that's going to take a while to clean. I mean, look at it. It's coming out of everywhere. And what I thought was a pinhole in the radiator is actually a uh, split seam on the top because it just got worse. If you can see that. I gotta order a new one of those. Very thankful for Uber because I don't want to bother any of my friends right now. Oh, no cars available. Come on. All right, well, Uber exit says there is. I shouldn't have started it, but I really didn't feel like breaking the windshield. Let's see me see how much came out. Oh, look at that. My trailer's getting a coating. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? Bet you're thinking right now, why don't you just pay 75 bucks for a tow? Don't you know you're going to be with a tow truck? And, well, you know, I could have done that, but I feel like I need to punish myself. So I stopped doing, doing stuff like this. So, well, it's all good. All right, guys, this is getting pretty lengthy, so I'm going to wrap up part one here. Uh, this got the radiator on order, repaired that trans line, and ordered some F100 badges. Let's just notice this window is getting a bunch more cracks in it. But uh, the story with this truck is it's a friend of mine's, and he said, you know, make a video, do whatever you want on it. He's like, so this isn't a regular customer's car. I wouldn't be beating on a customer's car, doing burnouts and stuff. But uh, he, he just wanted me to just bare minimum get it running and do whatever I got to do to it to get it going down the road. So we're now going to bring this over to after I you know, get the <laughs> all cleaned up the trans fluid and the, the new rad, but we're going to bring it over to his body guy and have him take a look at it. So if you have any feedback, feel free to drop it down below. If you'd like to see anything in a part two or any kind of fun things with this truck, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll make a part two if there's any interest in this first one, but I figured I would just share my experience. I know it, it got a little bit boring there at some times but i showed you everything we did with it and i had fun doing it so i'll say driving this thing around has been an absolute joy and it gets a ton of attention from people it's a really good looking truck and just super fun to drive so uh just needs a manual transmission <laughs> all right well uh hopefully i see you again and drop it a thumbs up if you liked it consider checking out the channel if you like this kind of thing any feedback all that hugely appreciated like usual and until next time this is no nonsense know how I'll see ya. Bring in the dog and trotch cat. Yeah.